First, we'll take a look at the Select Shape tool. So we'll click that and we can then, if we want, click on the trees in the background. When you do this, notice how in your style palette the properties get transferred over and if you click on your fill, you can adjust the color. We could go darker, we could go lighter, we could even change the color altogether to create a completely different feeling. And on your top bar, you can also adjust settings as well, such as stroke, fill, and line width. Next, we'll take a look at the Create Shape tool. Again, in your Fill Tools, it's the second one, we can click it. U is also the shortcut. And you'll see we have an outline of a tree here. This was made with the Add Point tool. So what we can do is click the Create Shape tool, and we have a thing called Lasso Mode. This allows us to do a freehand selection of the points on screen. If we turn this off, we can do just a standard box selection. You'll see though we have two drawings, the trunk and then the leaves. So we'll need to select these separately to create two different shapes. Let's select lasso mode and click on the outline of the leaves. You'll see now we have a checkered pattern indicating that it is selected. We can also choose to fill in fill, stroke, or both. We'll leave it with both for right now. Now we can hit the spacebar or click create shape to draw in the fill properties from our style palette. Now we need to do the trunk, so we can click that with lasso mode, and then we'll need to select a different color. We can go over to the style palette, we'll make sure we have the effect set to plain, and then choose a brown fill color for the trunk. Once you have that, you can then click OK. Now we'll need to come over here and click create shape and then we should be good to go. We now have a tree in the front yard. You will notice though that the trunk is above the tree. We can take the select shape tool, click on the leaves, hold and shift, and then hit up on the keyboard. This will bring that object ahead of the trunk. That way, everything looks good now. The paint bucket has seen an enhancement in version 10, but first let's take a look at its basic functions. We'll draw out a rectangle with the add shape tool with no fill or stroke. Then taking the paint bucket, we can select fill at the top and click just to apply a fill. If we do stroke, that will apply stroke properties, and if we do both, that will of course apply both from the style palette. So there's that, and that's how it's always worked. Now, in previous versions, you had to have a shape that was welded shut in this example right here. We weld the shape shut completely, and then we take the paint bucket and fill it in. That's how it used to work, and you can still do that, but now, if for instance we take the freehand tool and just draw some lines, you'll notice if we take the transform point tool and click and move around that these lines are not welded to the horizontal lines. Yet, if we take the paint bucket and click inside this enclosed area, it will create a shape, again, without any welding, which is a great feature in version 10. And you can even keep that outline. You can see here we move that fill shape, but we keep the outline that we previously made. So you can easily make duplicates. Now, this will allow you to create more complex shapes. So for instance, let's take the oval tool, draw out a circle, and then draw a second circle inside of it. Now with the paint bucket, we can click inside that bigger circle, and we created a moon. As you can see, we render it out, it looks good. Now, with that moon selected, we could go up here to the edit menu and choose select inverse and then hit the delete key to remove that second outline. And now you have the shape as standalone. And you can even go a little bit crazier with this if you wanted to. Let's, let's again take the draw shape tool and draw out an oval, maybe a second one. We can then take the rectangle tool and just start drawing some rectangles here. You know, just different shapes and sizes, just coming in here and intersecting with that oval. 
Now taking the paint bucket, click inside, you now have a really complex shape. And then we can select inverse again. And as you can see, we can really do some great things here that would normally take us a lot of time. You know, if we had the add point tool and we had to draw in all these points. So the paint bucket has definitely been enhanced. The delete shape tool does what it says. It allows you to delete the fill and stroke properties of an object. The thing is, once you do this, the outline and control points will remain. So that allows you then to, for instance, take the paint bucket tool and go back in and reapply different settings for your stroke and fill. So we could choose a different color, click with the paint bucket, and we have a new object. The line width tool allows us to adjust the width of a line based on the points that you have on the line. So if we select the line width tool and come in here, you can see when we click and hold down on this point, the lines around it are affected. They become thicker. And if you move your cursor to the right, they become thicker. To the left, we'll make them thinner. So you can really stylize your lines and create a freehand stroke effect very easily if you wish. Now, if we highlight all these points with the Select Points tool, come in here then with the Line Width tool, you can see that we can alter all of those lines that are connected to those points. Additionally, we can also come in here and we can deselect the points here just by clicking off with our Selection Points tool. And if we take the Line Width tool and turn Magnet Mode on, and you can adjust the magnet radius at the top as well. Basically, whatever is within that radius will be affected, and the things that are closer to the center will have a greater pull as opposed to the things that are near the outside of the magnet. And you can see we can make this bigger to get different results. And that just depends on what you want to do and how you want to resize the thickness of your lines in your projects. The Hide Edge tool allows us to hide certain lines on our objects. Basically, if you have two points, the line between those two points will disappear. So, as you can see when we click on any of these lines, let's say we want to get some detail out of this vehicle here, you can just click and you can see the lines are disappearing. However, the outline is remaining, meaning you can come back later on and reapply that stroke to those control points in line if you wish. And if we just hide the control points here, you can see that they are gone, the lines, but the control points do remain. So you could always go back and reapply them. If you ever want your lines back after using this tool, you can simply click again to make the lines reappear. So this makes things really easy when you don't want to knock out a object, but you want to hide some strokes. The stroke exposure tool allows us to choose what is exposed on an object in terms of your stroke. So let's click on that tool. It's next to your hide edge tool. And we can come over here to this rectangle. Now if we double click, that will select the entire rectangle. And from here, we can hold down the mouse button and go to the left. If we go to the right, the stroke will then be redrawn back in its previous position. Here, as you can see with the hide edge tool, it just hides the line altogether, but the stroke exposure allows us to choose what is hidden between two points. And you don't have to have the whole object selected, it can just be on one line. The last fill tool is the curve profile tool, and this allows us to transfer different outlines over to objects that we desire. So for instance, you can see we have a tree here in the front yard, and you'll notice the leaves are kind of blocky. They're not very detailed. Meanwhile, in the background, we have much more detail for the leaves. So let's say we want to mimic that effect for the tree in the foreground. Well, we could add a bunch of points and try to tighten everything up, or we could use the Curve Profile tool and save ourselves a bunch of time. So what we'll do here is first, click on the add point tool and while on the same layer as that tree we will come in here and just add 
a straight line and then come in here and add a bunch of dips just back and forth like so. Now you can create any type of shape you want. In this case, we'll do a simple jagged line. You can come in here and make any adjustment you want. In this case, we'll select the top points and then use the curvature tool to tighten everything up. Now, once you are satisfied with this, what you will do is you will take the select shape tool, click on the tree, click the curve profile tool, and then click on that line you just made. You can see now the curve profile has been applied to the tree. We don't even have any additional points. It just works. And if you come up here to the top bar, you can adjust how many times it repeats. The lower the number, the less jaggies you have, the higher the number, the more you have. So you can really customize this to how you see fit. If you'd like more information on Anime Studio, you can visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.